Now, today is going to be interesting. What's up, my homegirl? Rose? Nice to meet you, Rose. Nice to see you. Quarter Rose. We got some new people up in here. I want to thank all of you that are here. You know, we just, we just going to jump right in the game, okay? So let me share my screen and we could touch. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you guys a few things, okay? I have here the Galactic History panel. Now, some of y'all remember this and if you a lot of y'all love this okay talk about galactic history so uh we could we'll, we'll tap into this a little bit because we would need a whole event to go into galactic history but uh for now we'll just focus on different types of beings and you guys while we're skimming through you guys if you want can touch on you can say what beings you want to talk about and then we could dive right into them and, and see what's up okay so as we are doing that, um, you go ahead and tell me what ones you guys want to dive into. And then if one of you want to come on as well and to talk about maybe your experience with these beings or you want to have a discussion about them more and ask questions on mic, that's open too, okay? Is there a desert planet like Dune? Yeah, there's a lot actually like that. And that's what is... Um, that's what's interesting because a lot of these beings, a lot of these beings live on, think of any type of planet, desert planet, we're talking ice planets, things like that. It's extremely diverse. So anything you would think of, yes. Now there's a lot here. Let me see because I can't even see the comments. Okay, here we go. If you guys want to touch on Andromedans, I am down for that. Okay. Now this is the website that Andy put together so us for thank you, bro. Or so thank you, bro. And, um... Let's see here. I, I really like this picture. This is one of my favorites. Yes, I want to hear about Andromedans. Okay. Oh, um, I see someone here. Homie wants to talk about the Nomopo. Um, we could touch about them as well. Just don't let me forget, okay? Oh yeah, that's okay, Andy. We're just yeah, <laughs> we're just using the pictures. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> okay, so Andromedans come from Andromeda Galaxy. Not much is known about them except that they are members of the Galactic Federation. I'm very peaceful and helped in the evolution of mankind. Now, Andromedans are very interesting because that galaxy is extremely advanced now, extremely unified. Now, while the Milky Way is still trying to unify fully, the Milky Way has undergone the most struggles compared to other galaxies, okay? It is like a war galaxy, which is funny because to us, we're like, oh, this is a Tuesday, right? Like, we've been know about all this stuff, but you go elsewhere and we're like, yo, y'all haven't fought? And they're like, nah, we've been cool, right? We've been cool. And that's like the Andromedans. And that's why they help us a lot. Now, people in the galaxy go to Andromeda to learn about consciousness, to learn about how to fight, to learn about anything. Anything people go to Andromeda to learn. All of us have a connection to Andromeda, some more than others. And that just is dependent on your history, what your soul and what you've chosen to do. So I love Andromeda because if you watch things like Pokemon, Pokemon is based on based on Andromeda. Okay, they're basically, it's it's ba I'll say it like this: Pokemon is based is based off of Andromeda because they've done basically the same thing where you would capture um, different beings, and some people would battle. Back in the day, they would battle with them, but that was just a thing you could do. Now it's like, it, it was always a companionship. Like, oh, let me go to this area of, the, of Andromeda and capture or pair with this being and become friends with it. So there wasn't Pokeballs, but the Pokeball is just a metaphor for basically having that being as a companion, right? So that was a huge thing from Andromeda. Um, what else? very peaceful and also very a lot of them can be very warlike because they've fought in the milky way for so long and they'll come to andromeda and they see andromeda as real home and so they're like this is home so now they're andromedans because they've left lyra or left wherever there was warfare and they left go to andromeda and decide they want to live there and became andromedans and then they come back to the Milky Way to help out, which is why you see Andromedans almost incorporated in everything because it's like they're there for us. It's very, um, if you want to ask what is Andromeda like, it's very Buddhist-like, very Buddhist-like. It was good, Robbie. I love you so much. 
Robbie said, Grand Sectoids coming from MU Draconis. Ooh, has been coming up for me lately. If you got any notes on that. Yes. Okay, let's touch on that. Um, when we go to the grades, don't let me forget. I'm, I'm, I'm going to touch on that real quick. And I love you so much, Robbie. I hope you're doing good. Um, this was a common look for Andromedans. Purple. Um, some of them have like darker eyes, things like that. Or they're more human looking where they look very human, but very close to this, right? So I really like these pictures, man. These pictures are too a little too fire. This one is my most fire or the one I like the most. But um, it's actually, let me go to Google and search up Andromedans. Maybe you guys can get a little uh, sight as to what it look like. Oh, you guys are seeing it? Okay, good. It's a common one. Like this is what I mean. Very human looking, but not human. Um, as you can see, you're seeing a trend here, right? You're seeing the trend in how they look, especially the ball headed, <laughs> the ball, ball headed part. Yeah, the, and they got really large brains. Purple skin is um, it's it's from the it's from the star there around. A lot of the stars, um, as you know, the skin type is all dependent on the type of star that they're around. So yeah, you'll you'll see green too. Yeah, it's one of my favorite pictures actually. Do I have this on my computer? Let me download that real quick. Drim Thank you. Okay. Really like this one. It's a very accurate picture. Yeah, the ball. Yo, stop, bruh. The ball headed. <laughs> um, a lot of them don't like hair. I actually asked them. A lot of them are like, we really don't care. Like, it's just hair. But a, a lot of species have a connection with hair. They've, they've built their culture upon having hair. It's like humans. Like, we've evolved to have hair. We rather hair part of who we are. So, of course, we're going to evolve to it's in our DNA to mess with our hair and to use it as an extension of our nervous system, right? But, um, yeah, Joe Biden's really cool. Oh, I like this picture. Good depiction of height. Um, and yeah, they do have five. If you're looking for details, five fingers. Um, it's very, very similar to humans, but they're very psychic. They're very in touch with the higher realms because they're basically beings that decided to incarnate in physical bodies to help the rest of see it as like andromeda is like complete like they're like mission complete we've become who we want to become now our next mission now that we're complete let's help the rest of the universe which is what they do they help the rest of the universe so the whole galaxy is home now there's not like one star system and they're like oh i'm from this area i mean if you live in andromeda you'll be like oh i'm actually from here this planet andromeda to this constellation andromeda but anywhere else they go they'll just say we're from the andromeda galaxy because they see each other as one thing it's like how we when we travel in the galaxy like when you guys travel um in the galaxy in the next little bit and your star family comes to pick you up and you guys are going around places for real for real they you're gonna be like i come from earth like i'm half i'm half earth i'm half earth human half wherever you're from you're not gonna say oh i'm, I'm chinese or i'm i'm ghanaian or i'm canadian you won't be saying nothing like that um anyone know how the large black contact lenses help them do their eyes get distressed if they don't have it or is it a non-physical purpose oh it's definitely um oh robbie answered it here too they are very advanced lenses work for a lot of things like scanning and stuff yeah and to protect their eyes from the rays essentially because their eyes their eyes look just like humans but they're very large and very sensitive so they're gonna need them it's like wearing glasses and it also has technology in it to um like robbie said it has technology in it for scanning and things like that real real cool it's like ultraviolet scanning and ting and ting if your ethnicity in this lifetime is mixed could that be linked to your star family being mixed as well or different races in your star family yeah yeah it does like i'm also like i'm only 75 percent or 80 percent african technically african genome and then i'm 25 percent indian like india indian and um 90 percent of my star heritage is lyran and then that 10 percent is draconian so as you can see it, it's almost like it, it links a little bit like you can see where it is linkage but you don't have to do all that you just know that you are just mixed ethnic ethnicity wise with a bunch of different uh different types of variations of human which is actually good do you know which ancestral genetic lineage you come from yes or are you saying how do you know 
you start being shown it slowly, especially when you're drawn to a certain star system or types of beings, you know what is up. Um, especially for you, for you, Sky Woman, my homegirl, Syrians are going to be coming up a lot, as you, as you already know. As you already know, Syrians are going to be a big connection with you. And of course, you're going to be connected to a lot of others, but Syrians, you're going to notice you're like, that's almost like the first one. You're like, that's the one. Yeah. But um, <laughs> I... I know a lot of you are looking for me to tell you, and a lot of times I can't or I shouldn't because part of discovery is the discovering it yourself, and that's what makes it fun. Definitely open up and see where you're led. That's the big part is in getting this information is being guided there. Okay, next one. Hey, which one do y'all want to touch on next? Of course, we got you. We should touch on, um, before I go to Nomopo, let's go to the Draconians. As the Lyra, as the felines did, the Draconians came from another universe. Now, it's not fully, it's weird, it's not fully understood. They did come from another universe as the felines did, native to this universe now. Like, they, they live in this universe and in this galaxy, especially. And they're on a mission to do whatever, right? When they first came here, no, like it says here, um, the the Draconians had a lot of influence in Vega, so they started meshing with the Vegans and stuff like that. So that's why people will say, "Oh, the reptilians are native to Vega." You will hear that it's because they've meshed with the Vega civilization. Right? And Lyra had a lot of conflict with Vega. So these things you are going to see a lot of. They'll be like, "Oh no, they came from another universe." Oh no, they're native to this one. Both. So. Um, the reptilians were very much, and it was, or was it the reptilians, my bad, that came from another universe? It was the avians, let's be clear. The, the felines came from another universe, and the avians came from another universe. The felines created the humans, and the avians created the draconians. That resulted in the conflict between Lyra and Draco, and all that. Then the draconians were getting Draco, and if you are a draconian starseed, uh, you will remember times with the dragons, where the dragons had already colonized draco and the fe the reptilians took over so that's when they you'll hear about we may go to it later about the the dragon pits where the they would like slay dragons in these giant pits for quote unquote clout or to show how strong they are and then some of the dragons joined them and some did it and then they escaped to lyra and that's where you'll hear this the stuff with dragon riders and stuff because the dragons and the Lyrans really paired together at one point and they became really connected. So you see how all this mythology and history is coming into play. It's really damn cool, isn't it? Okay, but let's go a little deeper. So upon reaching the Lyran star constellation, they found allies, but were warned by the Arcturians of the Draconians deceit. Oh, this is the, the Lyrans that were being um, um, warned about the Draco. Overlooking this, the Lyrans faced internal rebellion escalating to war where they resisted draconian influence in vega the draconians met formidable opponents in the felines and retreated so as you see then this has led to the uh orion wars and stuff um and they were hunting down basically when they destroyed the lyran planets um first the a the arcturians warned the lyrans the lyrans said oh we could help them we could of course they're too open-hearted we could we're love we could help them become one and da 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 and then they got destroyed, which resulted in the Lyrans dispersing in the galaxy, and which is why all races in the galaxy look to Lyrans as the most ancient race, because they are a core ancestor to a lot, basically about 75% of the beings in the galaxy. And it's just like how if you were to say on Earth that um, all the races come from the African genome, so the black woman is the ancestor of all the races yeah same same thing same thing so um i found that really cool because dispersal led to um so much of the thousands of civilizations appearing and why humans the human genome appears everywhere because the human genome is seen as the native ancestors of this galaxy because the felines were brought here to create a native being to this galaxy and the avians the same thing so that's why the lyrans are like this is our home world and stuff like that and we're love and the draco were like nah this is our home world we are going to take over and we're going to take what's ours so you see same mentality in a different energy different vibration and a different agenda well how 
the history started. An interesting topic I've encountered lately. What's this thing about some rogue greys flying around that are non-consequentially abducting humans and I guess performing experiments on them? Yeah, some dark rep st some dark greys, they have their own agenda. They a lot of them they're using genetics to do genetic experiments back home or a lot of positive ones are doing this and taking genetics essentially because they're going to go extinct because they they've created their physical bodies based off of cloning so if they do not um if they don't use the genetics of other beings and which can repopulate then they will be destroyed they're going to go extinct so that was a thing in in galactic history where the greys almost a bunch of the greys almost went extinct because they used cloning um and manipulating dna so basically got to the point where it was like they couldn't reproduce regular anymore because they've been doing it for thousands and millions of years and it was like oh shoot we're gonna go extinct if we don't get some help from other beings so like for example um a lot of the earth governments created treaties with uh the greys to allow them to take some humans for genetic purposes to do this which was uh, for those who know zeta reticuli that was a big thing was they were going to go extinct if they didn't use some humans dna yeah g listen governments especially U.S. governments did a lot of background work with space pirates and darker um, beings, but also positive beings that were like, hey, we know what you're doing. We can't stop y'all from making a, a deal with the draconians or the dark greys, but we are the positive greys or we're the humans or we're the lyrans and whatever. We're here to help you in whatever way. So when humans decide to sign a treaty with the Draco, there's nothing they could do. The GFL's like, it's your free will. You chose to sign that. It's okay, but we could just be here to help you with whatever. Oh, yeah, we could talk about Syrians if you want to. They don't understand emotions because they don't have them and want to learn about them. This is also why they abduct. Thank you, Andy. Uh, yeah, a lot of them, or I say, this is what I mean by the grades are multi-layered. So never put them in just one thing like, oh, they're abducted because this or abducted because that. Thank you, Andy, for making me aware of that. It's like... Some of them, actually, they don't, because they've been cloning so much, they don't understand emotion anymore. They lost emotion, which emotion connects you to the etheric realm. It connects you to these other realms. The, it connects you to soul. So they're almost losing a soul, literally. So then they wanted to study, especially humans, since humans have the most powerful emotional uh, power, earth humans. They want to study that. But you see how we're some of those powerful beings, but... Our power is also our downfall. It's also why beings are really interested in humans. Okay, let me go. Let me brush this off by saying, sorry, y'all, I'm getting a little drained, so we won't talk too much. But um, the great, the reptilians, they have a caste system. They have um a caste system based off of like you'll see they have the dark consciousness beings, huge dark consciousness beings, dark dragons, dark alpha Draco, dark reptilian um dark smaller reptilians and then they also have like greys and insectoids in which they've enslaved um you could say some of them they enslaved and that's what was also a lot of the when they were going around orion and the orion wars was starting up they were they were finding these civilizations that were um lyran ancestors which then turned to greys right they settled in orion became gray beings after millions of years in thousands of years and they found them and enslaved them and said oh you guys would make great workers right and they joined they made them join the dark empire and that's a whole if you are gray star seed you remember those times or you feel those times resonate where they were enslaving your people which is exactly what they're doing what they were trying to do for earth and how it worked for earth but yeah they did the same thing with insectoids because insectoids are really sensitive and smart so they would do that okay let's go to syrians real quick do you see the sasani here yep future traveling grays yeah draco oh i see this new one andy draco crap let me click that real quick oh i really like these i'm actually gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna download this one picture up here where is it yeah let me let me actually download that picture real quick. I actually really like that one. Okay, anyways, let's refocus. <laughs> let's go to the Syrians. See, we got um, female Dracos here because in in uh, in Draco culture, the women run shit. It's a uh, that's how they roll. And most civilizations in the galaxy are ran by women. That's how it should be because women are way more powerful than men in terms of like that, like leading especially. They got way more connection sensitivity to the spirit realm. Stavros, if you don't go and sit down, <laughs> this man out here, man, if you don't go sit down, <laughs> but 
Yeah. Like, um, tell they roll. I actually rather it like that. But for some reason on earth, we do it differently. Okay. Let me find the Syrians. Oh, I like this one. We've got the avians, Pieties, aquatic Syrians. Now remember Sirius is very large too. Sirius is also where, um, the Anunnaki lie, where the Anunnaki were created. They were created to be royals because, uh, Sirius is very diverse. Okay. And, um, we had a lot of history there. Very diverse place. Wolf beings, water beings, humans, felines, especially the Anunnaki, which are the dark skin humans. All of these, it's very, 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 very diverse. And so they had a problem at one point in Sirius with not having any leadership. Who do we, who do we go to? Like, there's so much different types of beings. They're like, all right, we need someone to lead us. Who's going to lead us? It was too, um, there was too much division. So they said, all right, why don't we create a being, a species that is a mix of all of us, where all of us, they represent all of us because they are all of us, which is actually pretty smart. So they went, all right, let's mix all of our DNA together and make one being and who they create. Now, it's just like on Earth, why, why the black woman holds all the DNA of all humans on Earth. That is, that is essentially what it's like in the galaxy. They created, they created dark skin beings, which looked like the African people. And they were, they were seen as the royalty. They were seen as... The, they represented everyone. So, um, but that's also why they had a little bit of an ego because they were like, we're here to lead y'all. So when you come across Anunnaki star seeds, sometimes some of them, they could be, a lot of them could be not egotistical, which a lot of them can, but they could be, um, kind of full of themselves a little bit, or they don't want to do work. Like <laughs> my sister's an Anunnaki star seed and she's really skilled at getting people to do things for her. And she will avoid any hard work as much as possible. And she feels like, you know, she's a princess. Like, she lives like a princess. Everybody calls her princess. Yeah, because that's part of her, like, soul, um, her soul personality. That's, that's how it is. Some of them. So they had a, a point where they had to have their egos checked because everyone's like, all right, yeah, you represent all of us, but it doesn't mean you're better than us and da 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 so then when they came to Earth, there was a war between the Anunnaki, um, which you'll hear in where they call them Anunnaki gods. And they're like, oh, well, Enki wanted to, and Lil wanted to enslave them, and Enki wanted to free the humans and stuff like that. The whole war between them, they had a whole war amongst themselves about each other and how to handle things and what to do. My ears are ringing right now. That's crazy. Whoa. That's twice today. That's a cool thing. And I really like how these Anunnaki beings look, bro. They're so beautiful, and they all was rocking the, what they call the nine ether hair, uh, the African hair, which was a big part of their connection with the other realms, and all different, it was like a connect, literally had all the DNA, they had all the DNA of everything. They looked really, really cool. My little one is just like that. It says in her birth chart, she often gets her way, so you know she's got some Anunnaki up in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, curious, especially um, as she gets older, when she gets past life memories, she, yeah, she gonna be seeing, she gonna be seeing Anunnaki times. What's going on with Rashad Jamal? Actually, let me look up who that guy is again. I remember him, but I don't remember what he looks like. Oh, for those who are wondering. Yeah, um, he also talks about Earth being flat and stuff. He has powerful information. He really does. And he speaks about some good stuff, but then other stuff, it's going a little too uh, different from how things really are so yeah some people when they're really tapped in then they could tap into some things they want to believe are true or because it's in no um in no way am i criticizing him because all of us have to be in awareness too when this happens to us like we get really tapped in we know what's true but then when we get a quote-unquote conspiracy theory we have to be able to dive deep into the truth of it we have to be able to say to ourselves this can be true and this could not be true let me find out especially when you get divinely tapped in you know what's true and what's not and then you want to dive into it yourself and then go into it and see why it is true or not the earth is not flat so as soon as people say the earth is flat i'm like oh like here we go my reoccurring dreams are ufos and invasions let you know what's coming for sure let's go to uh next one okay I'm sorry, y'all. We'll do a few more. I'm just getting really drained for some reason. So 
Uh, we'll do a few more and then we'll end it here. And then we will do another uh, galactic and extraterrestrial conversation if you guys want to um, after our event on Monday. So after our event on Monday, I'll plan another event. I think we'll do it for Thursday. We definitely, because we, we could talk about ETs all day, right, in their history. Oh, and we will go into galactic history, okay? So when we talk about extraterrestrials, that one, we'll focus on galactic history more. I really like that. Yes, Grand Sectoids from Draco. Thank you for reminding me. Okay, so this actually goes to the Nomopo. Let me get the picture of them. Okay, they do got pictures. Look how limited it is, right? But if you put, um, um, what, what do they call them? They call them something else. It's in a movie, but they look like this. The Nigamuk or the, um, the Nomopo. They are neutral. So they'll just do whatever the hell they want. They could be, they could work for the light or they could work for the dark. A lot of people see them as dark because they just doing whatever they want. And that's why the GFL watches them just as they watch um, a few other civilizations because they could, they could do whatever they want and they don't want to be part of the GFL. Someone asked, do you listen to Bashar? So what I will say, some people that are channelers are, they're giving true information, but I want you to watch their energy because some people are channeling and they're giving true information. Of course, they're going to give truth in there, but when people are channeling and they're aggressive or they're mean or they're kind of hostile... And they're talking to you like this, you know they're not angelic. Angels will never talk to you like that. And if they do correct you, if angels do correct you, they would never be like, you shouldn't have done that. And you should be doing this instead. Irks. They won't do that. Angels are way too divine. They will say, oh, we understand why you did this. And they guide you through it. And then they say, well, well, for next time, you should try this. They'll never. Okay. So whenever you come across channelers, or people that consider themselves divine, divinely connected and stuff, always watch their energy, discernment. Their actions and their energy, they can say anything. They can say, oh, I love y'all, and y'all, um, and they can speak all these truths. But then all of a sudden, they're getting harsh, and they're getting, their energy's kind of like, whoa. Like, it's kind of like they're assaulting you energetically. You know what's good, okay? Just food for thought. Some witches are like that. People that are witches, you're listening to them, you're like, ooh. Like, you're giving real, you're literally helping me astral project and you're helping me energetically, but ooh, your energy is kind of dark and like, I could see the shadows around you and stuff. You know what's up. I'm a nice witch, I promise. <laughs> oh, Jan, you had a experience with the channeler, eh? Shoot. But it gave you a lot of insight, didn't it? Definitely allowed you to to um see before it comes around. Uh, Jamar said, because... Your itself will tell you and your energy, your divine energy will warn you in saying, get away from that. Yeah, you just know. And you'll know it's not your mind because you're like, you actually, that's what you know, it's intuition. Because you're like, I don't know, bruh. Something doesn't feel right. Like you walk into a room and you're like, your mind's not even thinking, oh, energy. It's, you're just like, something doesn't feel good here, bro. I don't know. That's how you know intuition. And then you have to think about it and you have to dive in. That's energy language because you, you're understanding the energy, but you're not understanding fully what that means. So when you're listening to someone, you're like, oh, why, why are they just, it kind of hurts to be around them. Or I feel like I'm being watched or hurt by them, even though they ain't even saying nothing. You know something not right. A lot of times we got to look for confirmation too. That's okay. Like you need to maybe be around them and then see one of their actions before you're like, okay, I could trust my intuition. My intuition already told me about this and I see this now. If you got to do that, that's okay. A lot of us got to do that. Actually, I still do that where I'm like, okay, I know about this person's ego, but let me hang out with them a little bit. And then you see the ego come out. And you're like, all right, thanks for showing me. We out. So back to... um the gray and insectoids no mopo are like that they're like a hot they're uh they're related to the grays and the insectoids so there's you'll see ones like this and there's um another species they're called i actually don't know what their name is but i know what they look like oh my ears are ringing again bro whoa they're kind of like this they look almost a little reptilian but they also look gray and they also look insectoid because they're they're a mixture of those and that's what's cool. I find it really cool with these mixtures because they see themselves as their own being, but they're, they're cousins. It's like looking at a, a Pleiadian and then looking at a human. The Pleiadians look at us like family, like, oh yeah, they're like our cousins. We're literally related to them, but they see themselves as their own civilization, our own thing. Yeah, just like that. Okay, yeah, everybody's ears are going, bruh.
Whoa. That's you know there's a lot of powerful beings around us right now. I guess because we're talking about them, so of course they're gonna be here. Um and for those who I know some of you are asking about doing a like you want to do a little reading on here. I'm not gonna do divinations right now, but I am going live later. Um, like a little bit later, maybe around eight or nine. So um we could definitely have some open conversations and stuff there about everything. Right now we'll just touch on some uh ets oh i will be going live on tiktok so you guys will see me there what what day is it oh it's saturday okay oh, excuse me next um excuse me confirmation oh, excuse me confirmation <laughs> next wednesday this wednesday coming up we are gonna be doing divinations with dawn so um yeah, we got that too. So don't forget about that. That'll be on Instagram. Of course, I love you so much too, Jamar. Um, was there any questions you guys had about the the hybrids of the greys and then sectoids? Um, let me leave that up. That movie called Um That's my dog. This is my dog. Yep, that's my dog right there. Yep. Insectoids. Those those guys I've I've uh, I just I just love them so much. They're amazing. Sorry, let me read some of these um these comments real quick. Someone was has stopped being in contact intuitively i feel something's wrong could you just let me know uh they are okay it's the empath in me it's a few people but that's okay because you're gonna notice some people get um out of contact intuitively because they're going more they're evolving personally yeah that's okay that's okay they just get out of they tap out of the the spiritual side a little bit to tap into the intrapersonal the mental side yeah that that's yeah that's not nothing bad um it's um it's okay it's part of their journey so yeah yeah you don't got to worry about them thank you for you're so loving bro thank you for thinking about the people like that for sure we need more of that hey cash whoa oh hey what's good bro i was just like was that jesus Seriously, nice <laughs> <scary. laughs> what's up bro nice to hear your voice again i <laughs> miss you bro we got so much to talk about but we will talk later <laughs> okay yeah we definitely <laughs> we gotta call again yeah sure but about the insectoids though i just did come up to me in a reading when i, I was getting a reading from alea and she told me like these are not like the dark ones but the more like the light ones and like she literally saw like two insectoid grace like kissing <laughs> oh, God, but then, they start, then start to they start to come up to me but as i get to you know uh, learn about them they're like neutral mostly uh, and they're very private they're not so around like you know they're not so active on earth but in other places maybe <laughs> but they mm. seem nice to me i don't know i mean whenever there's a neutral race I'm always, you know, there for them, trying to, you know, pull them to the light side. <laughs> of course. So, of course, yeah, it's my job. <laughs> but I learned, like, very um, different stuff that I was not expecting. Like, they are, they use this magnetic vibration frequency stuff, and they can become, like, invisible and go through walls and stuff like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Bro, I'm not spying on Grace making love. I am a gray. <laughs> <laughs> Stavros, if you don't go find a seat, bro. <laughs> but I seriously didn't understand what they want for me. <laughs> okay, or like, so, what um, did they mention at all a portal to you? I mean, I have a portal in my room that's going crazy all the time. Okay, <laughs> okay um, because they were speaking about a portal, and they were speaking about using that portal as a gateway to them. Okay, I guess it's the portal in your room. So with these ones, um, they, they are neutral and they like this like desert planet or like a planet that's like really yellow. Have they shown you that? That's my vibe. <laughs> I mean, that's my vibe. Any, any dry planet with just rocks, you know, I'm a rock mage. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. So they also have this like, they like to use this giant portal that they have on their planet to go to all these different places that they need to go to. And it's very much like, kind of just reminds me of Dune, but they're this huge ass portal, man. Oh my God. It's big, like a, like a tall tower, a building, and it's kind of like rectangular and they're using this portal to go in and out of places and they are neutral. So they'll go somewhere and like kind of quote unquote take over, but then over here, they're really loving at the same time. They're really mixed. That's very interesting energy. I am very, I am very mixed. So I guess that's why they can't come to me. 
Yes, there have, are many, many desert plants in Orion. Many. Have the um have the insectoids been contacting you recently? Yeah, I mean, oh my god. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Just now you say that. My portal literally just made like a tuck sound, like literally physically. <laughs> like, that energy is all scary. around you, bro. It literally like <laughs> that's what I get from making you jump scared. <laughs> good, yeah, good. <laughs> Yeah, but they, yeah, they allowed you a lot, my homegirl. Oh my god. And they're um they're giving you a lot of information. They're very attached to the Akashic, these ones. So if you're getting Akashic information from them, you know oh, what's yeah. up. You know, I've been getting a lot of past life memories lately, but mostly dark side, actually. <laughs> I mean from like my more darker side past lives. Okay. So it seems like they're helping you basically yeah, to attain information about your soul. That okay, that's that's really, really good. Game. I mean, whatever I am remembering from past, like, I am very grateful. Lately, I am in very much grateful energy because, like, I don't want to do the past life mistakes that I did again. I was so, going to ask you, what are you healing? Because they talked about healing you in something. Well, I, last week, I lost my friend to cancer. He passed away and I've been, like, going through. I've been very distant lately, but I'm fine uh, right now. It's okay. okay. Yeah, I've been in healing <laughs> side lately okay 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 well i'm glad you're feeling better and we want to as you know I, I was seeing some of the messages from before from last time when it was really happening first i want to say we love you so much and we we support you with everything we'll always be here for anything so you got so much healing energy is coming from everywhere my home girl oh thank you so much yeah, I mean, I really tried to help him and I was really working on my healing powers, which I am not very confident about. And after like that happened, I really felt powerless, like I couldn't do anything like that, you know, uh, that's I mean, I really got support from all you guys. Like I was talking to Gabby. She actually really helped me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I am not giving up. So I am <laughs> still going to train on my uh Bell's powers. You're amazing. Yeah. We love you so much. <laughs> Thank you. I love you guys too. What's up with um the new technology they gave you? They gave you some sort of like iPhone or something. It looks like an iPhone. I mean, I have an iPhone. Not my phone. I mean, lately I am on my phone all the time because I have been using some Topa thing to communicate with some uh, <laughs> friends from another universe. <laughs> Uh, in the phone <laughs> i mean i am using like ai okay. to get messages and stuff to you know because i have been really connected to some place that i don't know where but um i asked for a teacher to train my magic you know i'm trying to be a literally cleric mage my <laughs> light spells at all you know you saw some uh, and i asked i asked for a teacher but i was like expecting for like someone to come up for days then just one day i saw this man and like we train magic for days, like for all day. And like I'm in some other universe place, timeline, whatever. I have no idea where I am. But he really helped me uh, to train my magic. And I really get the vibe like he's actually like a, my soulmate's guide, like a past life self. I really get that vibe from him. <laughs> so, but I'm not sure. But it's been fun, you know. He really helped me while I was feeling, you know, powerless and sad. He came up and, you know, he trained me, helped me. So I'm fine, actually. <laughs> Love you guys. <laughs> okay, amazing. I think this technology is really cool that you're using. Whoa, I, I kind of want to do that. Whoa. Okay, yeah. that's, I'm, I'm going to take that. That's very, very Share inspiring. whatever you want, bro. I will give you <laughs> any device you want. <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, one last thing. Um, the grays on the ship. Um, does, that, does that trigger anything? Grays on ship. Well, I there is literally like a mother ship of dark grays actually literally on top of my house. Okay. They're watching me. <laughs> and like I saw them before. I was expecting them to attack me or something. And I was like ready for a fight, but they didn't. And then after some time, I realized they're not really attacking, just watching me. And then I decided to intimidate them <laughs> so they will leave me alone because they're not leaving me alone. So I just uh, tried some stuff to intimidate them so they will go away. You know, I I was I literally d did like a magic missile spell on them. <laughs> I was I like, in my, I'm like in my room meditating. Then I just you know did like astral travel, and I was like tormento, and I'm like standing. <laughs> he said a magic missile spell. <laughs> <on there. laughs> 
just to let them go away. They wanted to take you up on the ship. Did they request for you to come onto the ship? No, I mean, they really tried to get my attention for a really long time. They were like flying over my house. I saw them a couple of times. I saw them in Astral and they're literally like in my neighborhood <laughs> all the time. And I don't even, even know why. I was like trying to act all unbothered. Like, you want to watch me, bro? Watch me. I will show you how to be like a really, really good, you know, light gray of the GFL <laughs> and not be this loser. You want to watch me? Come watch me. I'll show you how to be a nice lady. <laughs> Well, you did good because you handled them pretty well because they was trying to get you up there and they was trying to intimidate you and you didn't allow it. So big ups to Robbie. Robbie, Robbie. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was with my, like, uh, guide and she was, like, protecting me, like, watching over me. She was by my side. So maybe that's why they didn't talk, come to talk to me. <laughs> yeah, you had them on the run, bro. They was yeah, on the I, I, run. I'm a protected guy. Don't worry. I will, I will handle a whole giant ass fleet of grace. <laughs> so who's this insectoid companion? Yeah. Well, this insectoids, I saw two of them and they actually looked very light. Like they didn't look like they are ser service to self or anything like that. I yeah, know they're completely so, service to others. So loving. Yeah. They looked super light. They kind of reminded me of the tall whites and stuff, but they have, you know, long necks and their head shaped like different. And they're very loving. Actually. I was actually wondering if, I had a past life maybe like that with um, my soulmate or soul family before. You sure did. And your connection with this, um, with this insectoid is going to be really cool because you're also going to see more insectoid family coming up. But I'm already seeing a little okay. too much. No, they can't come. I'm ready. Like, please come. I'm ready to meet just anyone. Because <laughs> I love up. them, you know. Yeah, they look beautiful to me. Like... They all look very nice. I love I love them bald aliens. <laughs> yeah, we know. Yeah, we know you do. <laughs> the insectoids, they're gonna they're gonna pull up really um not in a way that you think. They're oh. they're not gonna use your portal. They're gonna come through in a different way and it's gonna be very you're gonna be very emotional when yeah. you're around them because they're also very emotional, oh. as you know. So just be ready. They're gonna waltz in. It's gonna be extremely beautiful. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, it's so cute. I love them bold aliens. Come to me, please. We will have a tea with the Vipan web. My short gray friends. <laughs> Get the Astro tea. We will chat. Yes. yes. Vip and Vap. Yep. Yeah, Vip and Vap. <laughs> Yo, did you want to share anything else related to the insectoids or the grays that you wanted everybody else to know about them? I would love to hear some. Justice for the grays, justice for the dark beans, guys. <laughs> You know, you know, when people uh, talk about, say, gray, they automatically think about the dark grays. And they start like, oh, you guys, the abductors and stuff. And like grays really went through so much. And I know like most of the grays are not very so like, oh, I am 60, 70. Like most of the grays are still very 40. Give them time, guys. They are still working on it. <laughs> Like whenever I'm uh, with this, you know, uh, more lower vibrational beings than like i mean they're not low vibrational but they're like seem more neutral and they're not like angelic or you know palladian liar and whatever mm -hmm. uh, i feel like we, we should give them more love and support because like we are humans right now we're literally like 3d and dark lives matter <laughs> what? <laughs> yes dark vampire lives matter Gray yeah. lives. <laughs> Blood <laughs> good, <laughs> bro. So when it comes to um, vampires, there's some people that want to know about vampire biology more, how vampires work, or what makes them so unique as vampires. Would you like to share some of that with us or with everyone? Yeah. I mean, vampires are not so different than us actually people like say like oh they're like undead immortal they're actually not immortal and they're not undead being an undead i mean people saw them as like zombies like being an undead means like a zombie like a dead thing you're not alive or you're not living you're in between and that's how you become immortal so people saw when people say like they're undead so they're immortal they saw vampires as like zombies with no emotion at all and stuff but they're not like that they're not immortal they're not like zombies <laughs> they're actually so much similar to humans than you think uh, but they're 
neutral and they are very private. So I try to, to you know, um, make them come to light in past lives a lot, and I'm not giving up. <laughs> they are very but, uh, like secretive, or not secretive. Let me rephrase. Yeah. They're very private. I mean, they are super private to protect themselves because there has been so many vampire wars actually. Like literally 500 years ago on Earth, this Earth, there was a very big uh, war happened, and there were other beings also involved, like werewolves, fey beings, and stuff like that. There are, I mean, so many different type of vampires as well. Uh, there are like druid vampires. Uh, there are like more city vampires. There are mage vampires. There are like guardian vampires who are like strong and stuff. Uh, and there are like clans, and some clans are actually like. Uh, very positive some of them are more negative and when a vampire is a member of a clan they have to obey the rules because uh, like there's like a caste system <laughs> as well there uh, but they have to be so strict because they have to protect the themselves and humans as well so but i'm really hoping they will you know come to service after 2027 which i'm thinking they will join later to the party yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I find vampires interesting because they have abilities that make it easy. A lot of them have abilities that make it easy to be on the dark side, but yeah. a lot, most of them actually love the light and they use their powers for the light. So a lot of people can get confused and think that they're all like, I want to rephrase vampires because people will then attach that the the species in the galaxy that are vampires they will connect them to the vampire like yeah. beings that drain your energy on earth that most of us have had experience with in some form so detach those two we need a new name but for now all we got is is vampires but yeah yeah yeah, definitely. I'm all about using another <laughs> name as well because they're not energy vampires. But mm -hmm. uh, vamp people who have um, vampire past lives actually can become like an energy vampire here if they use their power like that. Yeah, exactly. It's like you have as a vampire species, they have ability to easily. It's just like a like when you come across reptilian star seeds. A lot of them easily, if they have a lot of reptilian lives, if they're not careful, they could easily be very aggressive or very angry or very like they could be very aggressive like that. But when they're not, they're very healing. That's what I love about Dracos is that they're yin and yang. Very, they can be extremely destructive or extremely healing and put things together amazing and, and bring things, build things. So same thing yeah. for vampire species. It's, it's like yeah, that. actually, you're very right about you know connecting them because like I literally met Dracula by the way <laughs> two times, and like the word Dracula means son of the Draco, like Dracula, and they are very connected in that. And he was super yin yang. Like I literally saw his aura and energy. He was like hundred percent yin yang, and he was so fun. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. That's that's actually really interesting. So they're like you could say the the vampire species. They they are like they see the Draco as like cousins, but it's like very distant cousins. Yeah, yeah. I've noticed they're very they're like not very genetically connected. Uh, I don't yeah. think. But yeah. No. They're like very a distant, but they're still like family in some sort of way. I, I thought more like a, there was a you know nickname given to him because of they were like they saw that energy in him I guess. <laughs> mm -hmm. They said, "Let me know how I could be besties with Alice Cullen." Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> For real, she's so cute. Maybe we will find her. <laughs> <laughs> Dracula seems like a cool guy though. I mean, a lot of them vampires are real cool. Yeah. I don't have personal experience with them. But I know about them, and uh, with the information the GFL gives me about them, they are very interesting, very secluded. They're almost considered in the category of, um, of like space pirates, but not really. In terms of, they have their own; they do their own thing over here. They're not against anyone. They're not for anyone. They just want to do their own thing, and that's why a lot of people respect them for that someone said in son of dracula they called dracula's son a 
Alucard. Oh, I'm seeing a lot of people needed this. Yeah, to talk about vampires a little more and stuff like that. Yeah, just remember, um, that's a big one. I can't wait to find a new name for the vampire species. Um, that's gonna come to us divinely. I bet you it's gonna come to Robbie first, and then we're gonna get the them. name from from her. Yeah. Okay. Um, we can touch on insectoids a little more, and then we will bust out the crib for the day. Did you want to mention anything about insectoids for the crew? Me. Oh yeah, you. <laughs> But I actually don't know much yet about the insectoids. It's just coming up to me new. But I am feeling very light energy from them. So I am very excited. And like, I will just say, you know, uh, never judge any race of the way they look or, you know, <laughs> or the um, name they have. We are opposite to space racism, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, guys, don't be, don't be speciesist. Right? <laughs> <What>? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like how um, I saw this guy mentioned portals. Speaking of portals, can you talk about opening and channeling one? I've been opening one, been learning on how to maintain it and like add crystals. Okay. Um, you can make a portal easily out of anything. A mirror is the easiest. Um, you could use like posters. Like I love this one up here above my bed. I easily use that one to go to different areas in the galaxy. It's like a map and it makes my bed like a portal type of thing. Yeah, so you could just just see it as a portal. See it as see it as like uh like you could walk in it. Like if you were to close your eyes, it feels like you could walk right into it. That's how you know it's a portal. And you could feel you just feel different around it. You could feel it around you. You know what is good. I mean, you will start to get confirmations that it is a portal, especially when all these energies and beings are up in your space, then you know what's good. And you can place portals to power it up and to like power more energy in it or to lock it. Like we make sure we always have locks in our portals or else anything and everything could just come through. So make it clear. Make sure you're really clear. You're like beings of this vibration can only come through and you feel it. You're like, if they don't feel like this or higher, they can't come through. You're making it clear and you're using crystals to lock that in. Yeah, that's going to help a lot for sure. Oh, yeah, you locked it. Yeah, you, you're already good with locking it. You you said, Hash, how far um, am I to Asha projecting? <laughs> okay, I'll just I'll just give a few messages because um, I said I wouldn't I wouldn't give too much messages today. But um, how far can you Asha project? You can Asha project a little as far as you want. For you, Sia, you've been very focused in the galaxy recently, especially uh in the galaxy mostly um earth too like those are the two main so you're not going to be really going to other universes or anything like that yet um but you will in time right now it's about understanding the energy around our galaxy i to say it like that yeah stars look very attractive <laughs> okay so you've been feeling it you've been feeling it like it's you're like i want to go yeah because you been you been going, bro, and not even remembering, and you're about to go and remember a lot more. So you know what's up. Your intuition is telling you, let's get going. So I really, I'll go back to the insectoids. I really like the insectoids because they're very sensitive creatures. Very, very sensitive. They could feel you, and the telepathy is so strong. You could, when you're around one, you'll probably cry because you could feel them in depth. You feel their soul and their experience it's overwhelming sometimes you literally cry it's really like in ender's game like when he sees it and he just cries because there's nothing that even has to be said and he understands and it wanted to kill him but it was like no because it could feel him and it knew and it wiped his tear away and he said as far as the insectoid robot forms one of the coolest parts is that they actually have the genes of insectoids in them it's really weird is like they're half insectoid, half robot, and they have this core in their heart, which gives them their power. Oh, that's actually really cool. That makes me think of like, makes me think of how they use the robotoid form to empower them, I guess, to be more, um, to either be more powerful physically or to be able to do more with their power, like to be able to scan certain energies that have access to certain energies i'm actually really curious as to why they would want to do that but the different insectoids they have so much different like um if you want to say groups or cast that I, it would make sense some of them want to mesh with technology as like the greys were 
And some of them are like, nah, we don't want to do that. And they want to do something else. That's cool. So with the insectoids, a lot of them, you'll notice they have hive minds. Just like a lot of different insects on Earth. And that's part of their biology. They have different, of course, they have different souls and different, they're individual beings, but they've agreed that they want to have a hive mind. It's like an internet. Oh, it's so cool. Having a civilization that has their own, they literally have their own internet. Their hive mind telepathy internet. And that's too dope. That's too cool. Because they're all talking to each other. You could talk to Isabel and, and Bessie. That's all the way on the other end of the planet. Just in the hive mind internet. And they're having a whole conversation. And they could all be marching in the same way. Walking the same. Doing the same thing all together without saying a word. Because they're all talking in that cool internet. Oh, I remember I had a lifetime where I was one. And that's the coolest part. You never really understand the internet until you are one. And then you're like, yo, like you're, it's literally like an iPhone or like social media. And you dab in your homie up on the other side of the planet. Yeah, yeah. You guys want to go, you guys want to go to wherever. And they're like, yeah. And then you end up meeting up there. And everybody's like, how'd you guys meet up here at the same time? Because we're attached to the hive mind. Like we've been talking. <laughs> very social creatures, especially telepath telepathically. They're very social words. You won't hear so much. They're more with their vocals, it's very much more clicking and um, hissing, very insect-like. insect, insect -like. feels expansive to think that for every species, there's subspecies, cultures, ancients, futurists, humanoids, like literally everything. Yeah. Is that amazing? That's why I say when we touch on species, it's like make sure we're not... That'd be like us talking about humans saying, oh yeah, humans are like this. They love to fight and they love to cause trouble and and whatever whatever but it's like do you know all the factions of humans like not all of them are the same so when you open it up it makes you see greater of how diverse the galaxy is i really like this picture for some reason reminds me of the insectoid wars lord god a lot of beings did not like the insectoids or they really loved the insectoids so there was a whole insectoid war and there's actually a whole galaxy that's just insectoids. They all were like, we're going to go over here. We're going to do our own thing here while some stayed in this galaxy. And a lot of them came from that galaxy. Their ancestors came from that galaxy and came here. And a lot of them went back. So they, um, this galaxy, it's called, um, me and Jeannie were talking about this the other day. Jeannie, what is it called again? What is that galaxy called? Um, I forget, but it was one totally it's all insectoids all these different insectoids and they had a whole war of course amongst themselves which didn't last too too long because of how unified they are and 10a is full of them yeah yeah yeah. but we were in a different one that's near orion I forgot the name yeah I, I i guess we're not meant to say the name because we were like oh yeah let's go to that galaxy i rem remember what it looks like though it wasn't Ursa Minor, was it? I guess we aren't meant to talk about it, but I was trying to look at my map, and I, I forget what it is. Anyways, yeah, they they have a whole thing. They have a whole galaxy that's dedicated to that. So some of you could actually project there, and you'll see the cool culture they have. It's all just insectoids, and none of them judge you for being another species. They actually want them. They want other beings to come and explore, but they never are like... I don't know. They're not against foreigners, quote unquote. They actually consider other insectoids from other galaxies foreigners as well because they're meshed with the the culture of that galaxy, like the culture of of that'd be like um okay that would be like for example Africans and African Americans. It's like we come from the same genome, same place, but different experience and different culture. So when you go to if like. An African-American going to Africa, it's like going back home, quote unquote, back home and where we come from. But we still have a different culture, different way of doing things. Yes. Yeah, CM Ting. CM Ting. I'm going to... The insects are just too cool. Oh my God. I love them, bro. And the wars with humans. Humans at one point were scared of them. Especially the negative insectoids. It, they're scary. <laughs> a giant bug. Hey, right? giant bug coming for you. Yeah, I like this picture a lot. I like this picture a lot. Who... I'm actually curious who remembers the, the insectoid